exchange today with Thomas Mulcair and uh, the Minister of Justice Nicholson on that. And Rosemary, I'll get your comment on this exchange in a second. This House ordered the government to give elected members protected access to uncensored documents. Instead, we got two boxes of contempt for Parliament, for its Speaker, and especially for Canadians. I encourage the Honourable Member to uh, have a look at the documents. Uh, there's 2,500 pages, Mr. Speaker. That he shouldn't jump to any conclusions until he's actually having. Mean, this is not like the budget, you know. Uh, they, they, should, uh, they should read it and have a look at it, uh, Mr. Speaker, before they come to any conclusion. Yeah, Rosemary, there's 2,500 pages here, given the fact a lot of it's still blacked out, but at this point, no one's really gone through it with a fine-tooth comb. So give us an idea of why the opposition is so angry or perhaps what's what the government is up to. Yeah, I mean, the, the opposition admits that they're going to go through it. Maybe they'll find a bit of a treasure in there somewhere, but they haven't as of yet. What this comes down to, though, is it's still the government trying to protect information for reasons of national security and still the opposition party saying, hey, you have to be accountable to someone and just dumping documents on us isn't good enough. They say that this is distraction, it's delay. They want to know why the government hired Frank Iacobucci if he's not looking at the documents to begin with. And uh, it does put that whole issue of privilege and whether the government's in contempt back into the spotlight and the opposition parties simply aren't going to be satisfied with this but Evan it does let the government say hey we're trying to be transparent we're giving you uh, some documents maybe just not the ones you want all right well let's find out a bit more about that thanks Rosemary okay. Rosemary Barton on Parliament Hill as she always is giving us the latest from there what is the government's view on this right now the Afghan detainee committee is meeting as soon as they break they'll be right here on power and politics they'll give us the latest but first I'm joined by Dimitri Soudis he's the Prime Minister's press secretary Dimitri good to see you Thanks you heard what me. Rosemary w w was talking about you know the opposition is calling this a document dump it's not chronological they wanted uncensored access to these things and now 2500 pages arrive still redacted and censored and not in order what did the government do today well, i kind of see kind of several points there the first is that uh, our government has been clear from the beginning that uh, as documents are reviewed by lawyers and officials who are neutral uh, and apolitical uh, and make decisions on what can be publicly disclosed uh, based on the law uh, and based on canada's uh, national security interests those will be made uh, available uh, to parliament that's exactly what happened today at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, you know a couple of weeks ago uh, the opposition was crying foul uh, on why the government isn't releasing anything and today they're crying foul because we release documents I but, mean but, but you know, they're, we, they're, we are they're asking the government they, first the government says we're gonna hire a retired Supreme Court Justice correct uh, Yakabuchi to review the documents and then sort of a week later 2500 documents appear that weren't reviewed by Justice Yakabuchi so what is his role here just as Yakabuchi is reviewing all documents related to the transfer of Taliban prisoners from the beginning of the mission in 2001 and he's reviewing unredacted uh, versions of the documents. So did and he, he will, review these? He will be reviewing all documents. But did he review these ones? Well, he's going to be reviewing all of them, including these ones. But these uh, ones from were the released beginning. before his review. So but redacted. No, no, but redacted. Th th right. th those are two different things. Th there's, right. there's documents that the government uh, is releasing to Parliament that will be on a regular basis that are redacted are based, re based on the work that is being done by uh, government lawyers and, and government officials who are not political and their only uh, priority is to ensure that Canada's national security interests are protected and that the law in place is respected. But, but you know the Afghan detainee committee, the members of the opposition have said there's lots of mechanisms in Parliament to get these documents and protect them for national security, although, by the way, many opposition members say that's not in any way, shape, or form a legal defense, that Parliament has the right, unfettered right, to all documents. They could look at them in camera. There could be a special committee. There's all sorts of well, ways we, to do it. You know, when, when you're talking about in camera, we, we've previously had opposition members, you know, go on their Twitter accounts while there's an in-camera session going on. Well, like just, I said, just, the just, government... Just for the record, that was Ujjal Dessange, the Liberal, and I put that to him, and Ujjal Dessange said if the government is w worried about a former Attorney General breaking the in-camera rule, he's happy for you to kick him out of there and get the unredacted documents to some other members. But, but let's be clear, this is not the political or the executive branch of the government who is deciding what is going to be redacted and what is not going to be redacted. There's a law in place, and opposition MPs are not above the law. If they disagree with the law, they can change it, or they can try to change it. But they it. have a different, you but, know they but, have but a different interpretation in of well, the law. Well, a law, the, the law is the law, and you know, I hope they're not saying that government lawyers and government officials who are not political uh, I hope they're not insinuating that these people are playing games. No, 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 but they're, they're, they're making sure that the law is respected. But they, they, based they're, on they're saying part, there is a law that respects the rule of parliament, 
and, the, and, and this was passed, the rule of parliament, parliament demanded that the government release the uncensored... That was not a law document. that passed, that was a motion, a motion in parliament that's being put to the Speaker of the House of Commons. But there's right. law, you know, there this, this country is governed by laws, and one of these laws is, is in terms of what is released publicly as far as uh, these national, documents. There is national security, yeah, of course. But, but parliament also says that the law says that parliament, not necessarily the public, but the par members of parliament have the right to say it. So it's the law is not as clear-cut, you have to admit that. Clearly well, the opposition has a different the, the interpretation question, of the law uh, the, than the government. The question has been put by the opposition parties to uh, to the Speaker of the House of Commons. He will be ruling on that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it, is, it is important to say that opposition MPs are not above the law, nor is the government. That's why we're letting the work on what is to be redacted and what is not to be redacted. Why, that's why we're leaving the work uh, to officials uh, and lawyers of the government who have nothing to do with the political side. I just wanted to, one last thing. I want to switch over to this maternal health thing. Yes. And, and, and you know, you and I have been uh, talking to each other over this, and of course, you, you exhibited a fair bit of delight at the Liberals who lost their own motion, uh, and, and some Liberal members vote against a, a Liberal motion on maternal health to talk about the full range of contraception, alluding to the abortion. And, and, and there's a lot of hay made at the Liberals' expense, and I get it. But it still pushes the issue back at the Conservatives. Yes. And I did hear that there was a fair bit of dissension inside the Conservative caucus about how to deal with this. So just on a yes or no basis on, on this, uh, this question, will access to safe abortion be even visited by the Conservative strategy in terms of maternal health? Well, based on what we've, we've talked about together, but you know, also on your show here, uh, we, we've been clear from the beginning that this policy has nothing to do with abortion. It has to do with making sure to save the lives of mothers and children, you know, clean water, good medication. And we said we're going to consider uh, various options, including contraception. But we have absolutely no interest to reopen so the debate abortion here in Canada, nor do we have uh, any... Uh, but would any you reason fund to reopen that include that nor, nor, nor do we have any reason to reopen the, the abortion debate uh, internationally in other I, countries I, I get it. it's not open but if it was part of an organization's strategy to fund safe access to abortion but they also had those other issues involved they were also working would would f money still flow to that organization top priority saving the lives of mothers and children g8 leaders will be having this I discussion know, but you still didn't answer the question. I'm, 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 I'm saying i'm putting it very bluntly by saying that we, we are not reopening the debate debate on abortion in this country all right uh dimitri it's always good to see you thank you for having me sharp new uh pink uh, shirt today very interesting it's pink, thursday. Interesting. It's pink thursday Prime Minister's Press Secretary Dimitri Soudis uh, joining us on a regular basis. Coming up, should human rights be part of every...